Hello everybody, how are you doing today? Hope you're well. Welcome back to some more Junior Strings adventures. Let's get warmed up. Standing up like me, feet planted firmly on the floor, about shoulder width apart. Let's start with shoulder circles. You should remember these from last time. Going forwards the way to start with. Nice big circles exploring how much movement we actually have in our shoulder joints. Trying to wake them up. And back the way. Good. Two more. Excellent. Hands up in the air. Don't bang them into the ceiling. And slowly let them drop completely relaxed, fully at the mercy of gravity, as heavy as can be. Up once again, stretching up, slowly release, let those arms fall and be as heavy as can be. Let's try a coordination exercise. So we're gonna be doing different things with the left and right side of our body. So copy me like a mirror image. So left arm, just go up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down. Okay, good. Now our right arm is gonna go, let's start off just with the opposite. So when our left arm is up, the right is down, swap them over. So we do a few of those. Try and be rhythmic. Yeah, don't be sloppy. Keep the movement rhythmic. Good, okay. Not too difficult so far, I hope. Arms by your sides. Now let's try something different with our left side. Instead of just up, down, we're gonna go up, down, to the middle. Up, down, to the middle. Up, down, to the middle. Join in with me. Up, down, to the middle. Nice and rhythmic. Up, down, to the middle. Up, down, to the middle. Okay, good. Maybe you can guess what's gonna happen next. We're gonna try and put those two movements together. Let's just recap them both on their own first. So left side, up, down with me. Up, down, up, down. Right side, goodness, I'm getting so confused with my left and right. This side, um, up, down, to the middle. Up, down the middle up down to the middle okay let's see what happens when we try and put them together expect much laughter from me because I always giggle when I can't get it right off we go up down <gasps> Ooh. I'm not doing too bad so far how are you guys doing it's very confusing, isn't it? Should we try starting again? So both hands up to start with, then both down, then they go independent. Whew. Okay, so our left side going in groups of three, our right side going in groups of two. That's where the confusion comes from. Let's try one more, one more time together. So up down to start with and then they do different things okay here we go <gasps> down so left arm just going up and down other arm whichever one that is going to the side in between times okay good let's tune real quick I'm gonna play my A string Play yours along with it and make sure it's ringing really nicely in tune. That sounds awful. Hang on a sec. Second time lucky. Okay, here's my A. Listen carefully. Good. 
it. D. for cellos and violas. Great, and finally, E strings for violins. I've got a harmonic that should sound the same as your open E. While we're here, I just played a harmonic to match with the violin's open E string. Does anybody know how we play a harmonic? I'm sure some of you do. So there are points on our strings where you can make a note come out by only really lightly touching your finger. One of them is here. So cellos, fun fact, if you can find, put your thumb in this bit here, this right angle, then with your first finger touching lightly you should find these harmonics. Now if we do that on all the strings, we get the same notes. the violin's open strings. So there's a violin hidden inside a cello. I think that's pretty cool. There are lots of different harmonic points. If we play an open string, say our A strings, slide your finger really gently up and down whilst playing with the bow. Hear all these different notes? Slide faster. Oh. It's very cool, isn't it? I remember thinking that was absolutely fantastic the first time I played it. It sounds like a spaceship coming into land or something like that. So all those different notes, they're different harmonics. So there are a lot of them hidden at different places inside the string. Let's recap our D major scale, the same as we did in your last video with me. Let's get that metronome going. So let's have four metronome ticks per notes, starting on open D. Nice big bows. so on. Okay, let's try together. Just up to the top and then stop. Don't come back down. One, two, three, four. Hold bow. Nice big sounds. Open A. Good job. Now let's try a soft version. So everything the same except let's make a pianissimo sound. Really soft, really steady. With me? One, two, nice and soft. Look at how much bow I'm using. Can you match that?
Nice. So, in our last video, we played that D scale over a drone. One note that stayed the same underneath, underpinning the entire scale above with the changing notes. This time we're going to do something a bit different. I'm going to play what you might call a bass line along underneath the scale. Um, so a bass line basically means the lowest notes of a piece of music. So often played by a deep instrument like a cello, a double bass, a bassoon, something like that. It's at the bottom of the piece of music, the things happening above it. So my bass line is going to feature different notes and this is the beginnings of what you might call harmony in a piece of music. So one way of thinking about harmony is um, understanding the notes that are at the bottom, the lowest notes of a piece of music with lots going on and seeing how what's above that changes and interacts with the moving notes that are in the bass at the bottom of the texture. We did have harmony last time in our episode where we just played the drone with the scale. All those changing relationships between the steady drone and the scale notes, they still count as harmony, but it was what you might call a very still harmony or a static harmony. It was just one note in the bass and it stayed the same all the way through. So very still, no movement. And when we add our bass line now, that's going to bring movement into the bass line. So the harmonies are going to change as we go through the scale. And I, that's what I want you guys to try and listen out for, the changing in the harmonies as the bass note moves around underneath the scale. So this is how our bass line is going to sound. Have a listen. Why don't you guys at home try playing our D scale going up whilst I play the bass line? So listen out for the different intervals that we have between our bass line and your scale notes. They'll be more different this time than they were with the drone because my bass line is moving around. So we'll have lots of different spaces between your scale note and my bass note. So listen out for those. See if you can feel the different qualities, the different sounds in those intervals. Let's try together. So you guys playing the ascending D major scale, I'm playing the bass line. Let's try it with me. One, two, three, four. Okay, stop you while I'm talking. Great, how was that? Hopefully we all came to an end at the same time. Let's try the same thing again. This time I want you guys to play uh, quavers. Let's try quavers. So instead of a long semi-brief, could you try... <laughs> And so on. So a little short, short 
short, sharp, spiky quavers with my long bass line, okay? Let's try that. One, two, three, four. And so on. Good, okay. Great, so now we're getting more used to how this little piece of music that we're creating is gonna sound in terms of the bass line and the scale and how they, how they fit together. Let's try one more version. Can you guys try a rhythmic improv version? So where you start in the middle of the bow and you make up your rhythm as you go along up the scale. Mixtures of short and long. You could just do lots of shorts. Yeah, if you're feeling energetic, if you're feeling a bit sleepy and heavy, you could just do lots of longies. As long as you're coming up with something as you go, it's not all the same. Yeah? So see if you guys can come up with something rhythmic for this one. Let's try, okay? My long smooth bass line, your guys' rhythmic improvisations. Let's do it. One, two, three, four. Great job. Okay, everybody, I've just realized that I forgot to plug my microphone in for those last few clips playing the scale together with the bass line. So apologies if the audio was a bit tinny from my end. I've got it plugged in now, so hopefully you can hear the difference. Uh, because of that, let's just try one more play of your D scale, those long four beat notes. <laughs> play my bass line just so we can bask in the the listening glory of the better sound quality and hopefully you can hear my bass line a bit more clearly and the interactions between the two parts that we're playing more clearly as well one more try of your scale with my bass line let's do it a one two three four so far everybody. Now it's time to get our composing hats on and I want to see if we can come up with a four bar melody that's going to go with my bass line that I've been playing. So hopefully having played the scale, your D scale, a few times now with my bass line, you might have an idea which notes sound good with it and which ones don't. Okay, or perhaps you're not sure, that's fine too. I thought the way we could start doing this is to go through each note in turn of my bass line. So there's four different notes. Let's go through each one at a time. And at home, you can play different notes of the scale over it until you find one that you think sounds good. Okay, and once you've done that, either remember it in your head or you can just write it down on a bit of paper if you've got one handy. So now's the moment to go and fetch a piece of paper if you think you're gonna need one. So if you think B, for example, sounds good with the first note of my bass line, just write a capital B. You don't need to worry about writing it on, 
on the stave or as proper music or anything like that. You can just write down the name of the notes. And if you're there watching this with your brother or sister, if there's more than one of you, perhaps two or three, um, working on this activity, that's great. Um, please try and work together to think of the note you think sounds good with my baseline notes. Um, you can either take it in turns to think of a note or just try and share ideas and figure it out together. So, with all that being said, I'm going to play the first note of our bass line. That's D. I'm going to play it for a while. You guys can try different notes from your D scale. See which one you think might sound good to be the first note of your tune. Okay, so I'll play it for a little while. See if you can come up with a nice note. So if you're not sure how to start, just play your D scale. Starting from D. Yeah, you can just go up the scale and find a note you think sounds good with this low D. Okay, have we got an idea for the first notes of our melody? If so, that's great. Write it down on your bit of paper. Or if you think you can hold it in here, that's great too. But maybe safer just to note it down in case it slips your mind. Uh, if you need time to work it out between you, if there's more than one of you, then feel free to pause and, and have it out and figure out which note is going to be the best one to start with. If you need more time, wind the video back to the middle of my, my long D and, and try again, see if you can settle on a note to start. Okay, now let's try the next note of my bass line. So we're figuring out note number two of your guy's melody. This is A, by the way, this note of the bass line. So try the same thing again. Try different notes from the D scale. See if you can work towards picking one that you think sounds good with this A. Use your ear. Use your sense of taste. Yeah, figure out what sounds good. You guys have all got great ears. bow like this at home kids by the way I'm just being silly okay great hopefully that was long enough to come up with the second note of our melody if not wind it back about 30 seconds and try again with that long a write it down when you're done okay we're halfway there great stuff next note of our bass line if this is a what's this note Can you figure it out? That's our A. This note is... Exactly, B. One step up from A. I can't play my A's in tune today. Awful. There it is, B. So our third bass note is B. You know the drill by now. Try different notes from the D scale. Work together or work on your own and find one that sounds really beautiful to go with B, this bass note. Great. 
So those of you out there that are working in pairs or threes, I'd love for you to try and treat this like a discussion. So perhaps one of you has one note, you know, that you think sounds good. The other one has another. Okay, there's no right or wrong answer. You could possibly note both of them down and decide later or incorporate both of them. So try and make sure you're sharing ideas out there at home if there's more than one of you. Great, so we've had our B. Hopefully you guys thought of a nice note to go with it. Write it down on your bit of paper. Okay, so our melody is nearing completion. This is great. Okay, I really wish I could hear them. Hopefully one day I will. If the last bass note we had was B, and this one is, what will we call that? It's an open string, so that should be a clue. That is A, exactly, a G, thank you. G is our last bass note. So try and come up with a final note for your melody to go with this G. probably enough G's for now. Hopefully you guys will come up with something. If not, like before, just wind back about 30 seconds and try some more ideas with my G. If you've got something, fantastic, write it down. You should now have four notes um, which are going to form the beginning of our melody. Fantastic job guys. Now it's time to perform our little melodies that we come up with with the bass line. So you guys should have um, a four note melody and I've obviously got a four note bass line so we're going to play them both together twice. So I play my bass line twice. Yep, and you guys play your four note melody that you've come up with twice. You repeat it, okay? If there were any notes where you couldn't quite decide or you've written down two options, that's fine. Just pick one of those options for this playthrough. So you should just play four separate notes repeated twice, okay? And because we're performing it, just to see how it sounds, let's make a really big sound, okay? So full bows. <laughs> relaxing the arm weight that we woke up at the start in our warm-up, really setting that free into the string. So we're making a big sound, a proud sound. Yeah, we should be proud to be sharing these tunes that we've just come up with. Let's set that metronome going. Okay, so four ticks per note, as in the scale at the beginning, as per usual. Let's do it, performing time. So stand or sit up straight. Let's share it. One, two, three, go. And repeat. Fab. To finish off today's video, I want to see if we can spin out that little melody and bass line piece of music into something a bit longer with some uh, contrasts in the way we're playing. Okay, so first time I want you guys to play our short quavers. Let's get the metronome going. some earlier in our scale. I want you guys to play your tune 
like that twice through. So the melody, four notes, we play that twice, uh, short with quavers. Should we try that now with the bass line? One, two, three, four. first part of our little piece that I want us to perform in a sec. Twice through our melody and quavers. Okay, see if you can remember this. The next part, I want to go twice through with our long quiet notes. Remember those from the start? We played a scale like this, didn't we? So I want you to play your melody, long and quiet, like that. Shall we try that? So you guys keep playing your same melody. We've had short quavers, now we're having long, quiet semi-breathes, long, quiet four-beat notes, okay? Let's try that with the bass line. One, two, three, four. Long quieties. So that's the first half of our little piece that we're going to come up with. Let's recap that, okay? So to start with, we had quavers, exactly. Twice through quavers. Yeah, so our melody and bass line twice in quaver form. Next was long quiet semi breathes that's right. Again, repeat it twice. Okay, section three. Again, see if you can file this all the way in your head. See if you can remember. Uh, if not, we can write it down in a sec, but try and remember for the time being. Section three, I wanted us to do stay quiet, do our rhythmic improvs. Quiet. So repeat our melody twice like that. Shall we try? Let's get that metronome going. So still quiet, making up the rhythm, yeah? Rhythmic improv. One, two, three, four. Whatever rhythm you like. And let's repeat. Nice and soft. Don't be tempted to get louder. Good. Fantastic. So what have we had? What have our three sections been so far? We started with... Exactly. Quavers. Then we had... Long, quiet semi-breathes. That's right. Then section three the new one we just introduced. Quiet rhythmic improv, that's right. And I wanted us to finish off with long, loud semi-breathes. Okay, so whatever your melody is. Long, loud, four beat semi-breathes, like this. Big sounds. Yeah? So, let's try sections three and four 
okay, which was quiet rhythmic improv. And then long, loud semi briefs. Yeah, you guys keep playing your melody the same notes all the time. Let's try sections three and four, okay? Okay, so quiet rhythmic improv, loud semi briefs. Let's try it. One, two, three, four. So quiet, making up your rhythms. struggled with remembering those different sections let's write them down okay so that when we perform we can feel confident about the order we're doing things in so on the same bit of paper that you've got your melody written on let's write down our four sections so quavers that was our first section remember <laughs> Second section was, can anybody remember? That's right, long, quiet notes. So you could write quiet semi briefs or quiet longies, whatever you fancy, really, whatever's going to help you remember. So quavers, long, quiet notes. Section three was quiet improv. That's right, so quiet rhythmic improv. So whatever your melody is. Yeah, still soft, making up the rhythm as you go. Mixtures of longies and shorties, okay? So that was section three. We'll recap these all in a sec. And finally, section four was Long, loud notes. That's right. So whatever your melody is. Two, three, four. Three. Full bows, big sounds to finish off. Okay? So let's recap that all again, just to make sure you've all got it. First section, quavers. Second section, long equalities, nice and soft. Section three, quiet improvs. Yeah, section four, long and loud. Two, three, four. Okay, I do apologize if I've over explained that a bit. Obviously, when I'm just talking to my computer, I've got no ideas, no idea whatsoever whether you guys are understanding or not. So hopefully we've written that down and we've got it really clear the order we're going to do things in. So in each of these sections, we repeat our melody twice. OK, so all together, we play our melody eight times twice in each of these different ways of playing. OK, I really hope that's all clear. And let's give it a go okay one last thing i want to try and include when we get to the end of the long loud section whatever the notes of your melody are can we whip our bows off at the end so if these were the last four bars <laughs> crescendo on that last note and then whip our bow off in the air so we have a big rousing crescendo to finish with should we just try that last note 
So whichever the last note of your melody is, let's play that on an up bow for four beats, getting louder all the way to the end. Yep, whichever the last note of your four note melody is, that's the note to play. Up bow for four beats, growing all the way. And whoosh your bow off, okay? Let's try that a couple of times together. So last note of your melody. One, two, three, four. Whoosh. Yeah? Let's try that one more time. Make sure you don't come off early. Yeah, keep playing for the whole entire four beats. One, two, three, four. Three, four. Good, big whoosh, big flourish to finish with. So that's how we're gonna finish, in style. Okay, let's do one performance where I shout out loud the different sections and how we're gonna play. So try and read it off your bit of paper but if, if you get confused or your eyes go to the wrong place, I will shout it out, okay? So we all know which section we're on and how we're gonna be playing. So let's do this together. So I'm playing my bass line, you guys playing your very beautifully crafted tunes that we've come up with, okay? Sip of coffee first. Need to be full of beans for this. Okay, so starting off, short quavers. So that's how we're gonna start, okay? Let's do it. Ready to perform with me after four? One, two, three, four. job guys okay hopefully all of that made sense the order that we played the sections in um, if you got stuck on anything don't worry because we're about to do it again and the most important thing I think is to stick with the way of playing each section okay so if you get a bit discombobulated or confused with what notes you thought of your melody, what note you're meant to be on, that's fine, just keep playing something, just do it in the style of the section we're in, yeah? Whether it's the quavers, the long quiets, the quiet improv, or the long louds to finish, okay? Just try and stay in the style and let your fingers um, go for a wonder, find any notes if you're not sure which note you're meant to be on. Now, let's try performing that, and I'm gonna not shout out the names of the sections, okay? So if you've got them written on your paper, you can still follow them that way, but I'm not gonna shout out. So try and go through them in order. Quavers, long quiets, quiet improv, and long louds, all in order without me shouting out. Let's do it. And I almost forgot, if you're at home with a grown up, which I hope most of you are, shout out, mum, dad, we're gonna perform our new piece. Come and listen and drag them away from whatever they're doing and make sure they come and listen to our new piece. Because we've made something that before we started this video didn't exist before. So we should be happy about sharing it and having somebody here to listen makes it even more exciting, okay? So give them a shout, get them down from whatever they're doing, tell them 
we've got a two minute performance that we've come up with. We've written a new piece. Please come and listen. Okay, audience at the ready, we've got a brand new piece that we've come up with and we're really excited to share it with you guys. Here goes. Remember the different sections, okay everybody? Okay, I'll count as in after four. One, two, three, four. Great job everybody. Okay, that's a wrap for today. That's everything. Thank you for listening grown ups if you're there. Other family members, thank you for coming to listen. We really appreciate it. And one thing I forgot to say was keep hold of your bit of paper. Okay, keep hold of that. We're going to need that next time. That is the score of your brand new piece. Therefore, it's very precious. Okay, one day, who knows, it might be worth a fortune. Okay, let's think of it like that. So don't lose it, keep it safe. Get somebody to put it next to the toaster or in your folder of music or whatever. Just somewhere nice and safe where the dog's not gonna eat it or muddy boots aren't gonna stamp on it. Please keep it safe. So, great job everybody. We've come up with something new. We've all helped to make something together that didn't exist before this little video. So give yourselves a big pat on your back and yeah you should feel happy about what you've done because making a new thing is always very exciting so great job keep up the practice and i'll see you in the next one bye bye for now take care <laughs>